Information and communication technology is a field of study that deserves utmost importance because our very existence is bound to digital spaces these days. We use technology for anything and everything. Technological innovations add space to our life and has become an indispensable part in almost all field of human activity, especially in academics. Therefore, the scope of ICT is very wide in the field of education. In this video, we are discussing some of the major elements in ICT from the perspective of NTA UGC NET. ICT stands for Information and Communication Technology. Sometimes we refer to it as Information Technology. But Information and Communication Technology is a bit more comprehensive term. Broadly speaking, ICT stands for all the devices, software, hardware, internet, data, and literally everything related to digital transactions that we do through electronic media. In simple terms, ICT refers to the technology used for collecting, storing, manipulating, and processing data. And this processed data is called information. And communication technology refers to the technology used for broadcasting and telecommunication. For example, when we do a video call with someone, we are making use of the information and communication technology. When we talk about information technology, the first thing that comes to our mind is a computer, right? A computer is the basic and foremost component in any ICT system. A computer is an electronic device that stores and processes data and runs with the help of a program. The program enables the computer to perform different actions like calculation, preparation of documents, text, editing photos, videos, etc. The programs are performed on the basis of the instructions that we give to the computer. A computer has mainly two components, a hardware component and a software component. Hardware components are devices that are peripheral, that are physical and that which can be touched. Examples, keyboard, mouse, monitor are examples of hardware devices. Whereas software components are devices that which cannot be touched. They are peripheral and non-physical. They are programs that run inside a computer. Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Windows, Google Chrome, Adobe Photoshop are examples of software devices. Now let's see the types of computers. On the basis of the nature of operations, computers are divided into three types. Analog computers, digital computers and hybrid computers. Analog computers process analog data which is in the form of signals and information. Digital computers process digital data and hybrid computers process both analog and digital data and they combine the advantages of both analog and digital computers. And based on the size, computers are categorized as mini computers, micro computers, super computers, tablets, laptops, etc. Now let's discuss the major units of a computer system. I'm sure that you all are familiar with this information. We have learned it from our school itself. But let's just brush it up. A computer mainly consists of an input-output unit, the central processing unit, and the memory unit. The input devices are devices that are used to transfer data and information to the computer. Examples of input devices are mouse, keyboard, scanner, etc. Output devices are devices that convert input data into human-readable format. Examples of these devices are monitor, speaker, printer, etc. The central processing unit or the CPU is the main component of a computer system. It processes all the data according to the instructions given to it. Arithmetic, logic, controlling and all other actions are performed by the central processing unit or the CPU. And the memory unit is a collection of storage cells where information and data are stored without being lost. The memory unit consists of read-only memory, the random access memory, hard disks and the like. Now, coming to software in detail, 
we have already mentioned that a software is a program containing a set of instructions needed to perform certain actions on a computer. And there are two types of software, system software and application software. System software is a software that controls the whole of the computer system. It coordinates the functions of every part of a computer. System software is a software that controls and manages the whole of the computer. It's the software that coordinates all the functions of the computer. You might have heard of Linux, Microsoft Windows, Android, etc. These are examples of system software. Whereas application software is a software that helps to perform a particular function like editing a video, photo, presenting a document or a presentation, etc. Microsoft Excel, Spreadsheet, Adobe Photoshop, etc. are examples of application software. Now let's move on to an important topic in ICT, that is programming language. Why do we need a language? It is a medium of communication, right? We need a language to communicate with others, to interact with others and to convey our ideas and thoughts with others. In the case of a computer also, we need a language to interact with it. We have already discussed that a computer is a machine that operates according to the instructions we give to it. And we definitely need a language to give instructions to it. That is what a programming language is all about. It is the language in which we write programs for the computer. And there are two types of languages, high level language and low level language. Low level language is a set of instructions that can only be understood by the computer. It is a cryptic language and cannot be fully understood by human beings. And for this reason, it is called machine language. This is the binary system, which means the coding between 0 and 1 and certain other codes which can only be understood by a computer. And whereas a high level language is a language that can be understood by human beings. It is familiar to the words that we use in human communication. It is a programmer friendly language and it needs to be converted into low level language for the computer to recognize it. C++, Java, Python, etc. are examples of high level languages. This we have come to the end of the video. In this video, we have discussed some general information and facts related to ICT. And in the next video, we will discuss the rest of the syllabus in detail. Thanks for watching.